I gotta be honest with you, I did have some sleepless nights thinking about how we're gonna pull this off. After exceeding our expectations and building a beautiful first closet out of junk, I can't believe I made this. <laughs> Ali and I are now knee deep in the challenge of finishing our tiny house. Yeah, you measured that. I did. <laughs> we have already proven that we can build anchor walls and basic cupboards out of old kitchens and whatnot. We're just trying something. We're just doing it. But do we have enough garage scraps left? Houston, we have a problem. To get one step further in finishing this van and actually making it look good too? What am I scared of? The easiest item to repurpose for your camper van might be the one that is already sitting in your house. Meet Frank, our no-nonsense former nightstand who has no idea what awaits him. Judy, can you come for a second? I've designed our kitchen. Really? The kitchen. Found this on the street. I know. And we've used it so much, our little nightstand, and now I'm like, why shouldn't we just repurpose this? Exactly. Frank is high potential junk. He has a drawer for cutlery, a countertop for cooking, and space underneath for storing the gas bottle and olive oil. There is only one issue. Frank is ugly. But we can work on that. We found this old piece of wood in our garage, which we used when we were uh, painting the roof. And I think that's a good candle to fit on here for our little kitchenette. One thing that's important to keep in mind when building a camper van with little prior experience no. is that even when things go <laughs> wrong, you should just keep going. Oh my god, did I just break it? <gasps> so that you can stumble upon the next topic that you have no idea about. Such as... Hinges, hinges, hinges. At the time, I had no idea how to attach a door to something. But just a couple of months later, I managed to come up with the coolest little solution for Frank. But before we continue giving Frank a new life, let me show you another piece of junk that couldn't wait to become part of our van. Oh, it's so beautiful. Let's see what I can use as a shelf. Oh, there's so many spiders. If you watched our last video, you may remember the rather mysterious undertaking of breaking down our old kitchen. Sorry. When we moved out of our first place about a year ago, it turned out we had to take the old brown kitchen with us. And that one set of salvaged cupboards became a gorgeous beach hut style closet. Get this, another part turned out to be a perfectly fitting neighbor for Frank, and we plan to make it a home for one of our most important van life gadgets. Size wise, it might fit, but it's not really perfect. But maybe it's good enough. Let's call her Jacinta. The shelf. Da -da -da -da. Let's see if the jackery fits. You have the honors. Yeah, you measured that. I did. <laughs> 25 centimeters, what you said. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, you're claiming that that's my measurement. Oh, wait. This is only 24 centimeters. Like, Ooh. you're blaming me. And it's a centimeter too short. Both for dickhead. Sorry. Yeah. You're right, it was my mistake. <laughs> So we just re that whole stupid shelf and yeah. lowered it by 2.76 centimeters. Wasn't it 3.5? <laughs> Here goes nothing. <gasps> it fits! And by the way, the Jackery is an amazing battery beast that can be charged by our car or solar panels. 
and having it sit in the middle of the cupboards seemed like a pretty great plan. We should make some nice holes here where cables can go through because then we can charge something in the other closet in the little charging station that we made. With the basic structures of Frank and Jacinta in place, we were entering the part where you at least try to go from functional to stylish, and I was getting nervous. I gotta be honest with you, I did have some sleepless nights thinking about how we're gonna pull this off. And one thought that keeps coming back is definitely, do I even have enough materials? So this morning I thought, I think the best thing we can do now is just make an inventory of what we actually have. And one area I hadn't really explored yet was our basement. And I knew there could still be some jewels there. So I went down and had a good look. Every time I walked down into our basement, my eye was caught by this creepy corner. There might be a few treasures in there too. Don't tell my landlord. Don't tell the spiders. No, there's just too many. There is another piece back there. And just as you think you have absolutely nothing, turns out you actually have quite a lot. After focusing on making progress in the build for so long, it is a weird and almost luxurious feeling to finally think about aesthetics. And although these two leftover plywood sheets were pretty great candidates for what I had in mind as a start, Building a stylish van out of scraps did not go without challenges, because there is never a clean slate. I decided that I want more round shapes in the van, and I think I know just how to get started. Except for making sure that our battery could still be removed, I pretty much had full creative freedom to build covers for our lovely middle cabinet. So guess what? Our old Jacinta is going to be an ocean girl. I always like those open oblong cupboards that you see on boats and remind you of being on the water. And when I had to come up with a solution for covering up around the fridge, I went even crazier. Let me ask you a question. Does this remind you of the ocean? But how about this? Oh yeah. So I'm gonna make more of this. Out of my scraps. Behold my wavy creations. But you're right, they need some color. Some of you might remember this awesome blue color. It's a leftover from when we painted our ceiling panels beach hut style. Can there be such a thing as too much blue in the van? cabinets are not going to have doors in the traditional sense of the word, but I do have an idea how to keep stuff from falling out of it. I've never tried this before, so it's kind of like a hit and miss situation 
wear test shots. I'm not sure if this is gonna be beautiful or ugly. It's raining again. I think I'm coming along pretty well on my blue waves, but before I can install them, I have to secure this bad boy. I have to admit, one time this bad boy fridge flew all the way across the van. We were driving through the busy streets of Amsterdam and did not have him secured, just sitting on the bed. And Ali had to hit the brakes pretty hard. If it wasn't for this anchor wall we built, this fridge could have probably hit the backside of my neck. So that was stupid. And now we're gonna make extra sure that this fridge, no matter how full it will be, will not leave its station. So I've been customizing some scrap wood to keep this bad boy in place. Now I've got some holes to drill. Hey. All roads lead to Jackery. Before we finish Jacinta, we have to give Frank a little attention because as you can see now, doesn't look great. But thanks to my secret Santa this year, I was able to purchase something that is going to make a really cool outdoor kitchen possible. But as usual, it's not gonna be easy to install this. So before I get into that, I'm just gonna start with an easier project, which is to make a door out of scrap wood. Remember this one? I need a thin piece of wood. COVID just started, Ali and I were worried that we didn't have enough hobbies <laughs> to do indoors. So we bought a bunch of leather thinking we were gonna make purses and wallets out of them. Well, that didn't happen and now I'm stuck with what I may have referred to as dead animal. Dead animal, dead animal, dead animal? Can it be more than just dead animal? It's too much. <laughs> but then I thought, hey, I could use this on door handles or something. Looks pretty cute. With things looking pretty good in the spice rack department, we head back over to the daring task of making our outdoor folding table. For which I use two leftover panels from our ceiling project. I gotta say, now that I'm working on the outdoor kitchen table, things are starting to feel especially real. Like this dream of ours to travel in our self-built camper van is finally almost coming true. It's crazy. Attaching these folding hinges to multiple surfaces and in a straight way 
seemed pretty daunting at first. But newly acquired skills such as moving Frank's drawer gave me confidence. Who just spent three hours readjusting a drawer? Me! With this thing lowered, we had space to install some extra wood to securely attach our folding table. <laughs> After nearly two years of building Otis, I have now finally learned that I can drill with my left hand. So what we still have to do is make holes in this table. And as it seemed like there were still a million little steps in between now and the installation, our table. Why not get distracted by some very cool repurposed decoration projects? With all this talk about spices and dinner tables, I was getting hungry and motivated to craft another unique piece for our van kitchen. I'll give you a hint. It involves swinging bananas. And then there is all this food talk, but where are we actually going to eat that from? When living or traveling in a van, you need easy access to plates. And I think I had found just the thing. This little rack was hanging in our old kitchen, which you may remember. It might be like decades old, I have no idea. Someone might bought it at Ikea to hang up kitchen towels or aluminium foil. Now I'm changing it into something else. I'll be honest, maybe I should have gone to Ikea. If I could just find a way to install it. Houston, we have a problem. I need to fortify the anchor wall in order to hang up the things that I want to hang up. However, I cannot use the wood that I want to use because I still need that to finish the rest of the van probably. So I've decided to take a leap of faith and try something different. All I had to do now was find a way to attach our plate holder to these sticks. Wait a minute, why is this thing white all of a sudden? Oh my god, I almost skipped painting day! I got my painting pants on, and you know what that means? <sighs> it's painting day! Even though all the different shades of brown tell wonderful origin stories about our junk, in order to create a more quiet tone in the van, I decided to paint most of our creations white. And after some final finishing touches, it's so cold. I just finished the very last piece of furniture that is going to be installed on that wall over there. And that means everything is ready and tomorrow is going to be the big day. You can do it. You can carry it for it. Boys. What, what can I draw in? first do the elastics. This was the day on which everything was supposed to come together. How are you feeling so far? Are you also so curious to see how it will look in the end? The wave! It feels great to see a plan come together. Our table! To see life cycles being extended and to get closer to our goal of finishing our mobile beach hut. 
But as always, we also ran into some trouble. I don't see how that's gonna hold. Exactly, that makes no sense. I mean, wait, that makes no sense at all. Huh? Should that go from the bottom? Oh my god, I'm so confused. How far? Yeah, this far. Oh, that's quite a lot. You this just... is really the maximum capacity that fits between the door. Okay, that means we need smaller screws. Yeah, they probably assumed your table would be thicker than this. Yeah, yeah. okay, so that means we need to get smaller screws than this. Yeah. And that's the only way we solve it. Okay, so the issue of attaching the table still needs some figuring out. But what we already resolved were these four little knobs to keep our cooker in place. I think okay. this is it for now. Just have to... Thanks for watching. Oh wait, this thing still. <laughs> what? Wow, okay. Stuck tape, but... And I have an idea. <laughs> heavy. Oh my Almost. god. <laughs> so heavy. Can you, can you spread it apart? Okay, this is the intended fruit hammock that we still have to install, but we don't know how, but this is how it will look. Nice. <laughs> All right, so we have installed everything that we worked on over Yay. the last couple of weeks. Not everything worked out as planned as usual. For example, the uh, table. kitchen table, we have to do some adjustments still, but I'm so happy with how it looks. Yeah, and now off to the tropics. Off to the tropics? What is he talking about? I still need to show you the magnificent end result. Wow, after all this work, the last couple of weeks, I can't believe it's done now and installed. Oh, I love the blue look combined with the white. But you can also still see some of the original colors, which I really like. Just reminds me of how we got this stuff in the first place. I like the look of these elastics. Curious how that's gonna work out in practice. <laughs> Might have to do some adjustments to this little door, but that's fine. And then this little former kitchen towel rack <laughs> with the repurposed bamboo, I think it looks so cute. It actually comes with this stick that you can put right here. And I actually found some nice hooks from our old kitchen. So I'm sure those are gonna come in handy. I guess we're gonna eat a lot of spaghetti. And then of course we need to do a few more adjustments to our outdoor table but I think it's gonna be great once that is installed just imagine it for now <laughs> and I think the item that I love the most is this scrappy spice rack wow look at this I can imagine it's quite handy to have your spices right under your outdoor kitchen stove and then not to forget my precious banana hammock that I spent hours macrameing <laughs> If you're an experienced fan builder or an experienced fan lifer and have a good idea for what we could do with this space, let us know. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked what we did with our old stuff. And want to stay up to date with how we will finish the rest. I hope we still have enough scraps left to finish this big wall. Yeah.